Good day everyone and welcome to episode 37 in our series on Airport CEO. We're starting off today after the lovely episode 36 where we were able to expand our airport and also deal with some substance abuse from some of our baggage handlers. We're doing okay. We've got just over $420,000 in our bank. Our airport is running along nicely. We have uh, just a quick look here at the scheduler and you can see that we are pretty well used. Now, East 04 is our new stand that we opened up in our last episode. So that has not been uh, or had any flight allocated to it yet except for the first day um, so that's coming into service and today we're going to continue to upgrade our airport and we are also going to look at some of the whiz bangery that we can add to our airport now it's worth recapping that we've got automatic flight scheduling on we have automatic uh, maintenance on our runways and stands. We have cleaners in our airport. We have guys who repair things when they break. And pretty much we're just running along building things at this very minute. So without further ado, let's go in and randomly spend some money and uh, upgrade one more of our stands down here. And I pick Easto 2. And I think Easto 2 deserves to be a concrete apron. apron and also uh, get a new jetway. Well, stand is handling but Ah, okay, fine. All right, good. Well, you might want to go then. I mean, you know, progress. You're holding up progress. I I suspect Captain Arthur there just doesn't care. That's what I'm suspecting. But anyway, we're going to keep an eye, we're going to keep an eye on this one over here because this is where our baggage handler came and cost us over 12 hours of flight delay in our last episode. Yeah, we'll we'll be watching him. There's no doubt about that. Okay, no bonuses for you people if you don't keep an eye on others. Okay. All right, so now we're down to 300,000. Let's go over and have a look at procurement. Actually, that, actually, that's a much better idea. Let's just stay here for a second and have a look at con offered contract. And still no new airline. Which is, which is disappointing, which is disappointing. It definitely limits the growth on our airport. Now, I wonder if that's related to the geographic location that we pick, um, being slightly to the north of Europe. But um, we might do some research into that offline. But in the meantime, let's go to... Contract that's over here, right? Procurement. No, 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 it's purple. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on. We haven't unlocked trial scanner. That's $75,000. The mind reader is $100,000. Very expensive operating, $5,000 an hour. Baggage handling. Baggage handling is a quarter of a million. Expensive. Conveyor belt is 50,000 and then 50,000 there. Wow. Oh, sorry. We've got the baggage handling service. What am I talking about? Okay. Um, 50, 50, 25, 75, 100. Well, I mean, in terms of costings, you would have to go with the generic baggage scanner. It's 
Leclerc by the generic baggage scanner or the conveyor belt tilt tray. Let's just read up on this. The generic baggage scanner is your airport's first line of defense against baggage contraband. By unlocking the generic baggage scanner, you will be able to detect any kind of suspicious baggage and divert its path through a diversion belt. Accuracy may vary. Sure. And then the conveyor belt tilt tray. Looking to build more complex conveyor belt system designs? Look no more. This upgrade will unlock the conveyor belt tilt tray, which will enable you to divert baggage in various directions depending depending its predetermined path. Comes with multiple settings. Doesn't tell you a whole lot, does it? No, it does not. And um, my recollection from a previous game was that there was a a destroyer of suspicious baggage, which I am not seeing here. Hmm. Okay. Sure. All right. Let's um. Let's go down the generic baggage scanner route. I feel this could be a thing for us. Uh, let's just double check this. It's fifty thousand dollars and no hourly operating cost. That sounds like the right thing to do, doesn't it? It does. All right, we're unlocking you. Now, while all this is going on, we've got people everywhere. Now, there seems to be a bit of a gaggle happening down here. What what is this all about? Why are these people here? Passport number, Papadopoulos, Constantina, she's from Greece, lovely lady, female, 44 kilograms, hmm. is that good, I don't know, okay, I see red marks, but when you click on them, you don't, oh, I see, bladder energy and hungry, but, why are they there? Why are they just hanging around there? And why is there a Z there? Why is there a Z? Is he asleep? Does he not know where to go? I don't understand. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say where they're going, where they're coming from. Uh, <laughs> look at this, people are standing on our conveyor belt. Are they standing on this conveyor belt? No, all right, hang on. Let's do a little cosmetic here for a minute. Staff. And we'll designate that as a staff zone. Yeah, I suspect that's why. We did it inside the conveyor belt, not on the conveyor belt as well. So let's just redo that and make that a staff zone. And if we're really lucky, all these people will get the hell off our conveyor belt. Go on, get off. No wonder the baggage isn't going anywhere. We've got people on it. All right. This seemed to work fairly well over here when we made this a staff-only zone. I think we should do the same here. And it came two behind there. But of course, this one's slightly different. Okay, but we're going to go two anyway. Well, we'll go one. Okay. Well, one more up. Right, and we'll make you a staff zone as well. Right. Very good. No, not very good. Because you know, they're going to need... Oh. They're going to need to get... We just made the front of the check-in desk stuff only, so no one will ever be able to check in. That was very clever of us. Yeah, we, we won't do that again. That doesn't seem like a good idea. I'm just saying it doesn't seem like a good idea. Right, okay, that's good. And look, they finally got off our conveyor belt. 
Well, that's nice of them. Okay, they shouldn't have been there in the first place. There's no queuing. No queuing at security, no queuing at the check-in. No queuing at the exit. And there is lots of hanging around here. And huge amounts are hanging around down there. No idea what those people are doing. And we've got contractors waiting to be contracted. Okay. No cars. Buses, yes. No cars. Everything seems to be going along quite well, actually. Oh, big opportunity here. The jetway, or as someone else I know possibly might have called it, the air bridge. Who wouldn't want one of those? Right, let's go and check out procurement again and see how we've been getting along with 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 the generic baggage scanner. No, oh, three hours and fifty-one minutes. There. All right, let's speed up. Uh, ahead, full. Very good. I really don't think we need to know about this stuff unless someone's not repairing it, if you know what I mean. I think our airport is looking pretty fancy. Keep seeing red, but when you go down and... What's that? Large gate seating broke down. Oh, okay, well, someone will fix that. Yeah, that's... The guy's fixing it now. There it goes. It'll fix. Very good. 285. Okay. I think this is going along pretty well, actually. Cleaned up the queue here. So certainly making that large size of a carousel was a good idea because it gives opportunity for all the people to stand around it. So we do have a lot of wasted space. Hmm. But we are, we are, oh, look, that looks pretty bad. We're going to, we're going to wait on that. I still don't understand that problem where the aircraft land there and turn right when they come off that onto the taxiway unless the default turning is to the right but I find that a little bit maybe not so good but anyway I'm sure somebody knows what's going on over there but I haven't figured it out and we're doing up here so we've got one more stand left that is still bitumen. Well, I say bitumen, asphalt, where you come from probably. Depending on where you come from, of course. How are we doing procurement wise? Generic baggage scanner. There you go, the product has been unlocked. All right, let's go down to one. Come over here. Now, let's go down here, because this is where we're going to be operating. We want to scan the baggage, presumably before it gets on the aircraft. And, cargo scanner. Cargo, ah, there it is. So when you get the cargo scanner, you automatically get the cargo destroyer. Ah, who wouldn't want one of those? I don't know. Let's put one in. All right, let's, um, let's pause for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, take this moment and pause to reflect on your life and what you're about to do. Probably we should put the scanner fairly early on in the piece. Um, now, I think there looks like a good idea. So, if we just look at the picture for a second. Oops. 
Let's do that. There you go. We see, well, I think we see that the two green arrows indicate where the conveyor belt will go and the opening to the left is where stuff that doesn't scan properly will come out. So in terms of, yes, hello, thank you, yes, we need to put you in there, thank you. So if we, say, put you there, actually, yeah, no, let's put you there. We put you there. We have plenty of room to the left to put in other things. So, one, two, three squares. So, first of all, we need to delete three squares. Well, three squares. Three square meals a day, young man. That's what you need. And we'll go one, two, three. Uh, we'll have to turn you back on and total disruption will now take place. <clears throat> of course it will. Because we're about to punch a big hole in the conveyor belt system that runs baggage to our aircraft for takeoff. And suddenly that's not going to work in a minute. Now it'll be interesting to see how it handles this. If it was a, you know, reasonably well modelled operation, the aircraft will be delayed waiting for the baggage to be delivered. What's he doing in there? Is he a staff only dude? She is a staff. Sorry, my apologies, ma'am. I did not see that you were a female. My bad. This is... um. What's that? Oh, he's a rampage. Oh, is that why he's got a yellow thing on? Oh, cute. Okay, so staff... Staff are taking shortcuts through the baggage handling facility. Play the staff. Oh, here comes baggage. What I, what we really want now is some builders to come along and destroy these. Uh, there you go. There's a builder dude. And uh, he's going to be breaking our conveyor belt system for us. Very curious to see where the bags go, and they stop. Oh, good. Okay. We need to get rid of these two, and then we could build some more stuff. Here we go. That'll be it. So all the bags now are going to back up, and of course that means that um, all the aircraft, in our aircraft stands, are going to be delayed. Right, so now we're going to build you. Very good. Then we're going to build some above ground um, conveyor belt system-y things out to, I don't know, maybe there. That look good. That's fascinating. It's diverting things on a belt that doesn't exist. That's what you want. Okay, cargo destroyer. This is it. And it's got a one-way-in thing, so we're going to put it... Oh, we're going to put it right there. Okay, that's it. Um, and <laughs> Did you see that? The bags went into the imaginary generic baggage scanner. Then they travelled down the unbuilt conveyor belt into the non-existent cargo destroyer and were subsequently destroyed. So that, that's an interesting concept. Here we go. Look at that. Stuff is magically happening even though it's not built. And notice that the non-existent generic baggage scanner flashed a light when it diverted bags to the destroyer and then it flashed a light over there when it destroyed things. So I think in terms of running an airport on virtual reality... We're there. We've made it. That that's pretty impressive. Well, you know what? I'm I'm okay to say it's working. Even though it doesn't exist. It it seems to be working. I'm very happy with that. And who wouldn't be? Right? 
if I'd have known you could do that without actually building the implements, that's what we should have done. But I, I think we should go back down here and have a look. Because they're actually going to build the real thing now, if you like. There you go. Little guys are bringing boxes, doing things. People are walking on top of them. They're all going very well. Oh, where are you going? Guy with the big spanner just walks straight down there. Come on, hurry up, you guys. We're paying by the hour. Well, actually, we're paying by the hour if they're staying around and don't do anything. Here we go. Let's see the light flash on the non existent baggage scanner. There's a, yep, there it is. And it'll go over there to the non existent cargo destroyer and flash another light. There you go. It gets zapped. I wonder I wonder how many passengers turn up at the other end and hear that, oh, I'm sorry, your bag didn't make it. We vaporised it because it didn't look good. Here you go. Nice red one. Into the non-existent cargo destroyer. Sink is broken and needs to be repaired. Hope everyone's keeping an eye on the sink. What's that guy walking around with a broom for? Well, I would have to say that I think that's been a complete and utter success. Um, apparently, the red device is called a cargo annihilator. That's a pretty, yeah, soft understated, very easygoing, handle, you know, politically correct. You're going to annihilate you. Anyway, <clears throat> there's another race of beings that might be interested in that, except I believe they use the term exterminate, but poof. All right, well, you know, that was such a huge success. I think we should replicate that process over here. That's what I'm feeling. You feeling it? I'm feeling it. I mean, like, well, first of all, we have to get rid of, um, no, not can't. We have to get rid of above ground stuff. And I believe it was three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, actually, how far out did I run you? That's a very good question. No, that's the wrong thing. Totally the wrong thing there. One, two. Three, five, six. Oh, well, we ran it out to the... Man. We ran it out to the next mark. Okay. Actually, I wonder if we can build it before we destroy it. And the answer is no. All right, no. Okay, well, we... We can wait. I, I think we're good to wait. Um, let's just wait for them to destroy that. So, Alex, how are the wife and kids? Yeah, they're doing well. They're doing well, Grumpy. Yeah, yeah. Do they? Do, do, do the extra hours you're putting in the airport interfere with family life? Oh, well, you know, the kids miss me on the weekend when I'm doing the double shift. But it's worth it because at the end of the day, we'll be able to save up for that new house we're looking for. New house, you say, Alec? Uh, is that uh, one that you've not had before? Or are they literally going to build it? Oh, no, it's a new house that, that we've not had before. There's a there's some people living in it now, but we're, we're hoping to be able to buy it off next year. Oh, gosh, Alex, if you need some more overtime, let me know. I'll see, I'll have a talk to your manager and see if we can get some extra shifts for you. Oh, thanks, Grumpy. That's excellent. You are such a good boss. No, no worries, Alec. Anyway, listen, you better get back to shift because it looks like you're almost going to be ready to put in that cargo scanner. Generic, even. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks, Mr. Grumpy. See you later. Bye, Alex. Okay, back to work, everyone. There we go. Up. No, we're, we're putting this in now. Ah, technical. Technical. It's all very technical. Okay. Uh, and now, the cargo exterminate. 
occur in there. Okay, that's all good. All right, well, as we know from previous experience, which we got literally five minutes ago, the bags will be handled through the virtual scanner and the virtual destroyer over the non-existent conveyor belt. So that is a plus for our airport. Now, we're just going to come down here for a minute and think a little bit about aesthetics, as it were, because you may have noticed down here that even though the white tiled area is designated as secure, and this area is not secure, all the nice people have been going through the security checkpoints, well, when they could have just walked straight around them and gone in here because there are no walls. So I think it would behoove us at this point to put some walls in there and just make it look like they have to go through the security uh, centre because ooh, we even secured it down to there. Do we want to do that? I think we possibly do want to do that because that's probably the way it should be in the real world if there was a real world that people had to go through the actual checkpoint like so like no well of course you can't go there it's a secure zone inside another constructed thing goose all right fine all right we've done that um, we did kind of cramp this a bit, didn't we? You know, when you look at this, we've sort of cramped that way too much and we've given way too much space over here for the baggage handling. You could literally get another two rooms, two designated rooms in there for baggage uh, collection, I think. But down here, look at the queue. Man... I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't think we need... Oh, look, I'm not even going to try and put cues on there because we've just crammed it up way too much. So, lesson for the future. Much more space in the entrance hall for the check-in and the security and much less space for baggage collection. There you go. Right? That's a good plan. Good plan for the future. Now, let's go back up here. We're down to $135,000. Let's speed up now. And we can see, even from this altitude, travelling along, that we still need to build our exterminator for the baggage. So I think we need to hang... Oh, there you go, we built. All right, now... We're going well. It would appear that no aircraft are being held up by persons um, consuming substances that they shouldn't be consuming while they're working at our airport. So that's quite good. I think we're going along pretty well here. All right, let's just check the scheduler again. Ooh, look at that. that that's utilised. Wow, I like that. Mind you, I have to say on general observation that the um, the auto scheduler does seem to not have a particularly. Actually, I wonder if that's a, if I'm about to make an incorrect statement. I think I am. No, see there, it, it's clashed on that one. I was going to say that it looks like it's made that separation between all the aircraft across all the stands even if they're using different runways which would make sense and i think it's probably fairly close to it so there's a there's a clash there but no it's done a reasonable job of separating everything out by 30 minute interval 30 minute slot and it does seem to be reasonably well utilised. Uh, it does scram it in too. 
not far into the future, but it does does push it in there. Okay, well that that's all right. We're doing well. Let's just go. To, well, wrong way. Let's just go down here for a minute and go management and see what the economy is doing. Uh, we don't. I don't like this. I have to say, I don't like this. I would like to see a bit more detail in the economy to know where exactly the money's going and where it's coming from. And I'd like some historic references in there so that I could make some, you know, balanced and thought out decisions based on data about where stuff's coming from money wise and where it's going out money wise. Hmm. Not a big profit on the previous day, I would have to say. Fourteen thousand dollars. Not a big profit. I can't find their way to the pub accessible through walls burn, burn. Well, no. That, that's not, that, that irritating, but everything's clear. There are no blocks. <laughs> oh, excuse me. There are no blocks. All right, I'm curious to see where today, well, today, what did we, we built stuff today. We built stuff. We operated things. We didn't buy fuel. Hmm. Average daily over a 12-day period is losing money. That, that's good. Not. Right. It's The current day is minus, aren't it? 21,000 and yet we have hourly expenses even though we're trying to look at Dave so that, that I think I really think that the um, the economy needs some work because I am not seeing it but there you go okay an opportunity no I, I think we need to get some more cash in the bank before we start splashing out again. But just looking at all the people, man, we're busy. There's no doubt about it, we're a busy airport. Uh, I think we're humming along pretty well, actually. Yep. Yep. No major issues anywhere. Think it, I think I think it's going well. I I really do. I really would have to say I think it's going well. Um, now I'm just debating here for aesthetic purposes whether we would make we would fill in these sections here, and just to get the aesthetic so that it looks like it's a wholly aproned airport. Um, but I think we can worry about that a little bit later on in the game. And I think also a little bit later on, we would need to get a... Uh, I'd like to put a remote stand in for no other reason than I think it would be a bit of fun. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, we're 33 minutes in to the episode and I think it might be time to call it. We've had success. We've not had the doctor pay of anyone taking substances on our airport that they shouldn't. We have introduced over here, um, I can't even remember the name of these things, but I think, like to think of them as the virtual reality scanner and the exterminator, which could be a foretaste of things to come. So there you have it. That's what we've done. We've put walls in and we have tidied up a couple of things. And it's been a wonderful episode 37 and I'd like to thank you for joining me. And I'll look forward to seeing you in episode 38 in this series on Airport CEO. If you've enjoyed the episode, please press the like button. And if you feel so inclined, I thank you very much for subscribing. And until next time, take care of yourselves and das Vidanya. <laughs>